Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Um, just to prove that this is not the mouse gun channel, as some have started to suggest. Today we're looking at something a little different. The U.S. Arms Abilene 44 Magnum Revolver. In the uh, early 70s, silhouette shooting and long-range hunting were becoming um, kind of a big deal. And uh, a fellow named Sig Himmelman thought there might be room at the top for a high-grade, premium, single-action revolver in 44 Magnum for these purposes. And in 1972, he established U.S. Arms. Uh, they also had United Sporting Arms, which was part of the same company initially, but they split off in 77 and produced the Seville Revolver. And... Um, I have to say, I picked this up a good few years back, and since then, it has put some venison in the freezer. And um, right out of the gate, when I first got it, I one of the first things I did was shoot a two and five eighths inch offhand group at 25 yards. So <laughs> there's definitely some potential there. Um, <clears throat> in 1980, the company was sold off with all the spare parts to AIG, uh, who assembled the final run-out guns under the name of U.S. Arms Division AIG. And these guns were variable in quality, <laughs> shall we say, and uh, may have tarnished the brand a bit. But um, this, is a, this, is a very, this is an AIG example, and it's very high quality and properly put together. So obviously some of them were fine. Um, again, chambered in 44 Magnum. This is not a lightweight gun at 50.1 ounces unloaded. This example has the seven and a half inch bull barrel with, um, with Magnum porting, which we'll, we'll see on the tabletop and, uh, adjustable sights and the finish is gorgeous. So let's go to the tabletop and give you a closer look at this. So first things first, let's unload and show clear. Um, in operation, this is pretty much exactly like any other single action revolver, except Ruger's. You bring the hammer to half cock so that the cylinder rotates freely, open the loading gate and manually rotate the cylinder to ensure that there are no cartridges in the holes. Now, as you can see, this is fitted with a adjustable rear sight, adjustable for both windage and elevation. The front sight is a very large conspicuous ramp flanked by the magna porting. Now, magna porting isn't magic. It can't change the laws of physics and reduce recoil. And while it does help keep the muzzle from flipping up quite so much on this gun, uh, this is really not a high rate of fire weapon. So I consider them to be of dubious utility, but they came with the gun. And uh, as you can see, the finish on this gun is a beautiful liquid blue. And then purple cast to both the steel ejector rod housing and the frame, which I find quite lovely. Fitting is excellent. Now, this is an AIG gun and they have a spotty reputation, but apparently they did it right sometimes too, because this one's certainly lacking nothing in this uh in that department that isn't owed to basically being 40 years old and having a little bit of uh pitting here and there the trigger pole is lovely there's just enough yes you can see there's just practically no travel there's enough tension on it that you you know your fingers on the trigger and then it goes boom and it's just delightful and cocking it produces a pleasingly mechanical, almost musical tone. The hammer has a very wide spur with serrations across it rather than checkering. And it's quite easy and comfortable to use. Um, you can see there is a variation of a transfer bar safety here, which when the trigger is fully pulled, it pushes up a bar that acts on this lever to push it forward so it contacts the firing pin. But without the trigger back, you cannot, you can see the firing pin does not protrude and cannot protrude. So it is safe to load this revolver with six cartridges. 
disassembly again is like pretty much every other single action in the world, except that this uses the old Colt style screw rather than a spring loaded cross button. Um, apparently with very heavy loads, there was some issue with the axis pin jumping past the button and that would jam up the revolver for subsequent shots and need to be dealt with. Um, you do have to keep an eye on this screw so it doesn't loosen up, but there's no danger of this pin coming out unintentionally. It only comes out far enough to be retained in this position. You To remove it, you actually have to physically remove the ejector rod housing. For those unfamiliar with single actions, it's very simple to operate. You cock the hammer and fill the holes with cartridges, lower the hammer, and you're good to go. When you're done shooting, you kick out the empties using the extractor here, line up the cylinder, and it pushes the cartridge out. With higher pressure loads, it doesn't push it all the way out, and you have to pick them out manually. But um, So, pretty much standard operating procedure for a single action revolver. Now, <clears throat> the grips are chunky. And that's not bad in one respect because it does help distribute the recoil forces. But it's also, it's a little too chunky in spots. I'm uh, tempted to modify these grips further to just have a little less bulk at the front. It does tend to bang up my uh, middle finger when I'm shooting one-handed which I only ever do for things like this video, for example, because why would you? Um, on the whole, this is a superbly made, very accurate weapon. The Abilene has been a bit underappreciated because if you get a good one, it is a genuinely premium, high quality revolver. Um, every bit as good as the Seville. Of course, the AIG guns, with their spotty reputation for quality, may have tarnished the brand. When I bought this several years ago, I paid $375 for it. And you can still find these for $375 to $450, although prices are on the rise. But they're less than, typically they're less than half the price of the their descendant, the for sibling, the Seville. And um, if you get a good one, there's not that much to choose between them. So, so, until next time, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you again very soon.